Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. So technically we only have one follow-up to a previous holiday season, back in 2013 when I reviewed Punisher Silent Night. It was not very good. It had some of the trappings of the holiday, but none of the feeling. The good Mr. Castle hunted down a crime boss who had gone into hiding ever since his father was sent to jail thanks to a snitch. The Punisher tracked down said snitch, who wanted some Christmas celebration for the orphanage where he grew up, and proceeded to kill lots of people and traumatize the poor children because he's kind of an ass. Yeah, there wasn't a lot that made this sort of story need to be set at Christmas, plus the Silent Night title is slapped on there just because of the loose Christmas connection. As a Punisher story, it's okay at best, but as a Christmas story, it was blech. It was joyless and lacking any form of compassion or decency in the end. But apparently making Punisher Christmas stories was a thing because there are multiple ones out there. We'll probably look at some more of them in the future, but for today, let's dig into the Punisher Red Xmas. The cover's okay, a painted one featuring the reader looking up at the Punisher. He's wearing a Santa suit, the snow is falling, it's all good. Except for one point. The gun is drawn fine, but despite the fact that he's looking right at the reader, he's aiming the gun off to the side. Is that our Christmas miracle? Frank decided to shoot the ground next to us instead of our head? We open outside of Tiffany's and Company in New York, where a group of mobsters are walking towards the store and passing a charity Santa worker. Help the poor. Help them yourself. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now, isn't it? I don't believe in Santa. Yeah, well, you're a criminal, so we'd only bring you coal anyway. The bell ringer has Punisher skulls in his eyes. Oh, you will. Punisher, these men don't believe in Santa! Yeah? Well, that's gonna change real quick. And he rips off the fake beard and opens up his coat to reveal that indeed it's the Punisher, gunning down the criminals with a gun I guess he had concealed in the coat. Okay, I was joking a second ago. Was Frank Castle's quip really, I'll murder you until you believe in Santa? A mother and child were nearby and beheld this. Mommy, why? They were naughty. I got you trauma for Christmas, kid! Happy holidays! So, like, how long was he waiting out there to do this? And what's gonna happen to his donation bucket? Is he gonna keep that money? Stealing charity money, Frank? And during Christmas, no less? This is the worst thing you have ever done, sir. On Christmas Day, a group of mobster wives meet in the bathroom of a funeral home. Which, frankly, the weirdest part for me is that they scheduled the funeral for Christmas Day, but whatever, maybe they don't celebrate it. They're the wives of the five who were killed, and they're discussing what to do now. Most of them are ready to take over the business operations themselves, but the bigger issue is the Punisher. Obviously, as long as he's around, no one in the Napolitano crime family is safe. One woman, Regina, is asking the other four to invest $500,000 each in a solution to the Punisher. You gals ever hear of Suspiria? <laughs> Oh yeah, look at those faces. These women have all been at a dance academy run by witches. Despite her having the same shocked expression as the others when the name was mentioned, one woman asks who they're talking about. You're too young to know about this. Well, I mean, I saw the remake at least. 
Suspiria was a hit woman who killed another crime family in Naples when they moved in on the Napolitano family's wine business. They kept her on retainer since then, and has, over time, limited the amount of stuff she'd do, and they think they can bring her in to deal with the Punisher. They're a little reluctant to spend that much, but Regina reminds them that as long as the Punisher around, no one in their family, themselves, their children, are safe. Suspiria soon gets the call, and 48 hours later, she's in New York. Meaning it is now December 27th. Red Xmas! I don't know, maybe this is supposed to be going by the Julian calendar, and the mob family is Eastern Orthodox, so Christmas isn't until January 7th for them, but it seems an odd detail to include in a one-shot without comment. But then again, the next shot has the Punisher stalking the remaining member of the Napolitano crime family on New Year's Eve, according to the caption. Also, the streets no longer have snow, and there's plain regular green shrubbery on the side. Frank is also not really dressed for the occasion, with just his regular trench coat and a bunch of grenades strapped to his belt loops. You know, in case his hands get cold. The remaining mob husband, who wasn't part of the rest of the group, Dominic Napolitano, is meeting with the rest of his goons at a strip club called the Juice Box. Hey, don't laugh, they get premium business when the dancers get Capri Sun sprayed on them. He decides he can't wait until the place closes lest he lose them, so freely admits he's gonna go in despite the risk of civilians. The civilian's presence being what is keeping him from just bombing the place. Say, Frank, what was your origin story again? Something about your family being caught in the crossfire or something? Ah oh, well, probably isn't important. And so the Punisher just walks right in and stabs the doorman in the throat before shooting everyone in his way and for some reason steps right onto the stage where a stripper is performing. And she does not care about this. This is a woman who had to work on New Year's Eve and is just happy to be making some cash. At least until during the shootout, when Frank drops some grenades right near the stage. Our hero, everybody! As an aside, this is also done through three two-page spreads with a few smaller panels on either side. Just an odd artistic choice, I feel. Like the creators knew that the sequence wouldn't take long, so they needed to pad it a bit. I've seen worse forms of padding, just this is unusual. Also, Dominic's guards suck! He wants two of them to go out and try to fight the Punisher. No disrespect, Dominic! And that's misspelled. The comic has established there should be a K at the end of his name. But I'm a nine book an hour bouncer, not a human shield. I'm with Brian on this one, boss. Sorry. I mean, sure, it's smart to not want to risk taking on the Punisher for such a lousy job, but your boss is a mobster. Why do you think it's a good idea to say to him, Nah, I don't get paid enough to try to protect you. The Punisher storms in, and, like before, he has skull eyes. Are those just contact lenses he always has on or something? Oh, and more on the these guards are terrible train. The Punisher is like three feet away from them, but they all miss him, and he easily manages to kill them all except Dominic, because he wants to kill him with a knife. Or possibly a sword, given the size of the handle, but the blade just kind of disappears into the shadows, as you can see here. We cut over to Times Square, where people are merrily celebrating New Year's, and some of them are being killed. As the police exposit, Suspiria sent a message to them. She's planted bombs underneath Times Square, and will detonate them if they try to take her down. She wants the Punisher to show up, to encourage things that she's sniping civilians every two minutes until he arrives. But this plan confuses me from the cop's point of view. They have a bead on her and are ready to take her out, but they're afraid she's telling the truth and that there are indeed bombs that will go off if she's killed. They have bomb squads searching the subways without luck and they're taking her at her word. But if that's the case, why are they allowing the civilians to still be in the area? Look, I get not wanting to start a panic or just the problems with trying to get hundreds, if not thousands of people partying on New Year's to clear out, but the alternative is tons of people dying! And you've already seen she is perfectly willing to murder people given she's an active threat killing people! And it's not a matter of, oh, and don't announce it to the civilians that this is happening, because they already gave the info to every TV and radio station in the tri-state area, so that the Punisher can hear it! I don't know, maybe I'm missing something here, and there's a kind of risk assessment analysis out there that says it's better to let her do this because less people will die with the sniper rifle if the Punisher shows up. But it just feels like I would try to at least do something to minimize casualties by clearing Times Square, given she's already proven to be a massive threat, and there's no guarantee that the Punisher will hear this. 
Oh, but of course the Punisher only just got back to the motel he's staying at with a pizza after he took out Dominic. And he hears about the latest killing on the news when he sits down to eat it, with the reporters there talking about it while everyone's still just standing around celebrating. Did they tell people all this and they just thought, well, I'm not gonna celebrate New Year's at home and my favorite bar is closed for renovation. I've got good odds I won't get shot. Now that Frank knows this is all going down, the reporters even know, thanks to Interpol, that it's Suspiria who's doing this, he heads out there with his own sniper rifle. I guess the reporters didn't mention the bomb threat part of it, since Frank says he doesn't know why the cops haven't taken down Suspiria, since she's made no effort to conceal herself. He shoots her, but it turns out to be Suspiria's blonde assistant wearing a wig. The real Suspiria traces the heat signal from Frank's sniper rifle, while the cops report that indeed the bomb squad says it's clear. Oh, well, thank God they cleared that up in such a timely manner before anyone got hurt. And I guess Frank just went back home, since he's laying in bed 24 minutes after midnight for Suspiria to come in and try to kill him. He's ready for her, attacking with a knife and tackling her but it just leads to a brawl and shootout. What amusing bit, he knocks her into the bathroom, tosses a grenade next to her, then puts a chair in the door handle to keep her from escaping, but she just blows a hole in the door with her gun and tosses the grenade back out. Punisher's expression is a classic clever girl kind of thing. They continue to fight, and when she's in close, she kisses him and then bites him, because like the movie Suspiria, she is pretty but very confusing. He finally manages to incapacitate her and demands to know who hired her. He offers to take her to a hospital, since she's bleeding out from a massive leg wound. They banter a bit, with her claiming that she's the same as him, only doing it because money is a necessary evil. She claims she took this job so she could be here with him. It's weird when the story from last week about two people filled with emptiness and hate and violence and trauma dressing up as animals to fight or commit crime is a more logical love story. She claims she didn't kill anyone and wasn't responsible for the deaths in Times Square. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. You set in motion the events that led to their deaths. Does that make me responsible? Yes! For the price of a single kiss, I will tell you how and who is accountable for hiring me. Is it sad that I want the mobster wives to win this? Because so far they've been the only competent characters. How long has it been? I mean, you kissed him already a few pages ago, so not that long. But no, he agrees and kisses her. The next morning, the Punisher drops off Suspiria's body right on top of Regina's car. She summons the rest of her compatriots to meet at a Hyatt, where she tries to think of a new plan, but the Punisher arrives. Regina, being a badass, doesn't try to run, just spits on the Punisher and yells that he ruined her life. Hell, even when he shoots her point blank and puts a hole in her stomach, she just stands there and tells him off. He tried to be badass and said, Neither marriage nor war will go away once begun. Well, I tell a lie. There's another typo. So he says war twice, which actually just makes it look like he forgot what he was saying in the middle of shooting her. And he doesn't even have a counter to her saying, Better one day a lion than a hundred is a sheep. All he does is say, whatever, and awkwardly kick her in the face out the window. Like, look at this. This artwork was approved. Also, a person just got shot in the stomach and kicked out a window. Merry Christmas! Or Happy New Year, I guess, since we're now long past Red Xmas. The others say it was all her idea, and it seems the Punisher did his homework on them. Just because they married gangsters doesn't make them gangsters, so he's gonna let them walk away. Though he does insist they stare at the custom contact lenses, because damn it, most of his enemies don't get a chance to see them before he kills them. Well, actually, his stipulation is they have to leave the country within 24 hours or he'll hunt them down. Well, that and one other thing. There's a Santa outside of Tiffany's on Fifth Avenue. He's a friend of mine, collecting for the families of the people who died in Times Square. I want to see some Christmas spirit before you leave town tomorrow. It's January 1st! And so our comic ends with the women coming down and putting a crap ton of gold and cash into the little bucket. One of the women seems to recognize him and just wisely walks away. Happy New Year, witch. Even the story knows this isn't Christmas anymore. This comic sucks. 
The overall story is a fine Punisher idea, widows of gangsters hiring an assassin to take out the Punisher as both revenge and preemptive defense. The execution is where it all falls apart. It's barely a Christmas story, especially when the majority of it takes place after Christmas, and the character work is shoddy at best. It feels like there was supposed to be more to Suspiria and her backstory, but it was all just implied and crammed into her last conversation with Frank to try to justify the kiss me and I'll tell you nonsense. Her plan is ridiculous and unnecessary, and we could have tied in Frank's massacre at the strip club to everything else, it otherwise feels like a lot of padding, by having her follow him from there. I will grant you that the fight scene between the two over the course of eight pages was actually really good. Would have been happy to just have a longer fight between the two, maybe add some more Christmas stuff to it to help justify the title. But everyone is an idiot in some capacity, except for Regina and the other wives, who are pretty competent and well handled, even if it's only Regina who even gets a name. Even Frank is stupid, given his twisted logic for why he should or shouldn't kill people. In the strip club and then with the wives, who were still perfectly happy to hire someone to kill him and knew all about their husband's illegal deeds and were pleased to profit off of them. Maybe other Punisher Christmas stories are better than this one, but like Silent Night, this one's just awful. Next time, another movie adaptation. Because the season is now associated with their release, plus the holiday special, we're gonna talk about the adaptation of Star Wars The Force Awakens. known as Terence Baxter. In life? Uh, so you're a ghost? A spirit, yes. But it hurts so much. I... What are you doing here? I was drawn here. There is a great mystical power in this room. A conduit between the living and the dead. I could feel it. Hoped I could find some. What do you need? In life, I was not a good man. I felt humanity was beneath me. That it meant nothing. So I treated mankind like nothing. Made people suffer. But now, in death... Oh, the torment! How are you tormented? I am condemned. I did not travel amongst my fellow men in life, went against them, so I am doomed to wander, never lingering, never sharing, always exhaustingly moving, and so I shall move, weighed down by chains forged of my misdeeds. I'm sorry, I don't know how I can help. Please, find a way. Free me from this eternal purgatory. Let me start again. Terence? Where did you go? Eliza? Were you talking to Moate? I... where... No, I wasn't. Good. Best to avoid him, in my opinion. 
He is not to be trusted. The dead rarely are. The living are no better, frankly. Yes, I just spoke to the ninja-style dancer. He told me about your feelings concerning Ninkara and your desire to depart us. I... I can't stand to be here any longer. I don't even really get along with most others. Poyo and Nimue, sure. You, of course, but... Linkara really hurt me, you know? And I don't think there's anything here for me anymore. Yes. I understand. You do? Yes, though I don't agree. Do you know why I left my universe? Because Lord Vice was coming, right? Oh, he was the final push, yes, but truth be told, I was planning on leaving anyway. There was nothing left for me there. My brother driven mad and obsessed with some girl who rejected him when we were teenagers. No other loved ones or family. Linkara was once concerned I might still try to take over the world. But he took me off that leash a long time ago. I can leave or stay if I want now. But I stay now because I've found something new. It may be dysfunctional, it is most certainly not perfect. But these people have become my family. And well, I hope they've become yours too. Didn't you erase Linkara's memories and try to clone him or something? Yes, but we're working through it. Because that's what families do. If they're meant to be family, sometimes the family is toxic and you need to get away from them. That is also true, as I can attest with my own brother. So the question is, has this family become that toxic to you? I don't know. Well, at the very least, do you have a reason to stay here? Something to do before you venture forth? 